Hi everyone, this is Lisa from audiblemarketing.com. I had a comment on the Audible Marketing blog from Glenn Murphy, who is old school radio guy, who's come back to voiceovers and just wants some help with learning the computer technique to enable him to record and edit his voice. And the main things he says he would like are... Uh, trying to record books a chapter at a time, fixing natural mistakes, removing inhaled breaths and dog barks, replacing misspoken words with retakes, and um, then asked if I'd do a video on that. Well, Glenn. Glenn, I know where you're coming from, actually. When I started in radio, we used to splice tape together, uh, hand splice tape together to edit audio, and numerous times I'd be on my hands and knees trying to find a bit of tape I'd edited, and uh, didn't mean to edit and other times I'd be there with my fingers all taped up because I'd splice my fingers instead of the tape. First of all I would say go to the blog, do a search on the blog up here for Audacity Tutorial and that will bring up the tutorials I've already done on Audacity which I think will answer most of your questions like how to get Audacity going, um, learning how to export your audio, how to quieten things down, that sort of thing, do a bit of editing. But I'm going to give you a quick tutorial because one thing I haven't shown is how to go back and add audio once you've recorded a file. And Audacity kind of it's a very simplistic way I've chosen of showing it on, in Audacity. There may be an easier way, well not an easier way, but there may be another way of doing it that somebody will show me, uh, mention on the blog if you do know a way. But this is a really simple way and it also prevents you from making too many errors in your editing um, because it ends up on two different tracks. So if you edit one then you're not editing the other. And I'll show you what I mean. If you click record in Audacity just start recording your audiobook and I would suggest that you don't stop and start uh, if you've made a mistake stop in terms of leaving a gap so you can find it easily then keep going mark it on your script that you have got to go back to that point and re-record something but keep going until you hit your natural break which may be the end of a chapter may be the end of uh, a page depends how you're recording it but wait till you finish and then press stop now I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you do that by clicking that one and this is where we want to edit in our audio in fact this is where the mistake was let's say that's our mistake and you can do this, you can listen back by clicking the play button to find the exact area that's your mistake. But let's say that's our mistake. So I want to re-record this section, which I'm going to left click with my mouse, highlight by dragging it across. And first of all, first thing th is I'm going to cut out the bit that I don't want by clicking either delete on your keyboard or cut. But I've still got a gap there where that's where I'm going to slot in the bit of audio that I'm going to re-record. Now you can listen back to it, make sure you get the right intonation and the right flow, you'll know what I mean. Um, and then you're simply going to click record again and don't panic, you won't record over that, you'll actually record on a new track. Audacity always creates a new track. So click record then you start recording the bit that you want to edit in and it won't affect the bit above it because Audacity is keeping them separate. Click stop. Now as you can see the bit I've recorded is much longer than the piece that where we want to slot it in so I'm just going to click back on there. I'm going to put click generate. I'm going to generate some silence and I think I'm probably going to want about three seconds silence so type in three and generate silence. Then I'm just going to move the bottom piece of track using the time shift tool. So click on that and then left click and maneuver it. And you see I've actually got too much. Although I'm going to get rid of a piece anyway. So let's say that was just a, a funny noise at the beginning that I wanted to get rid of. Again, left click, highlight and then click cut. And again, it cuts it down here, but it won't cut it up here. And let's say that at the end is something silly that I didn't really want to keep. Left click, highlight, and click cut. 
still too long for that gap. So I'm going to click on the top piece again, I'm going to generate silence, and I'm going to go for another two seconds. That's given us plenty of space. So now what we're going to do is click the Time Shift tool, left click, and just maneuver it to where we want it. That looks pretty tight, actually. You can play it back, as I said, again. All you do is click back on this button, place it where you want it, click Start. Sorry, I did that with my space bar button, but you can click Play up here. And Audacity will play both bits. So although when you're editing it keeps the two separate, when you press play that will automatically move to the audio here and, and it will edit in. If you want to tighten it up a bit you can zoom in. Let's say we just want to tighten it here. So we left click and we highlight a bit and we click cut and still maybe want to tighten up that gap. Left click on the bottom bit and cut and whether you edit the top or the bottom you'll you'll get used to what, where you're editing as you can see there's quite a gap between the the audio there so again I'm going to tighten it up a little bit at the top by clicking cut and a little bit at the bottom as well and click cut once you're happy with that and you're sure it runs nicely and flows well and you know you can do it again somewhere else if there's another piece you want to edit in you just do it again and you click record and it will record on a third track and you can keep doing that with different tracks I'm not going to do that so I'm just going to get rid of that one and click the X there and that deletes it once you're happy with that go to project oh no nearly forgot make sure that click here on the end of your audio track click your shift button on your keyboard hold it down and click this so it highlights both pieces of audio and then go to Project, Quick Mix, and as if by magic, it mixes it all together. And you can listen back and make sure that flows nicely, but it should do once you've done your editing within the two tracks. Now quickly, although I've shown this on other videos, just to show you, if you've got a dog bark, then you just left click, highlight the piece of audio by dragging your mouse, and then you click cut. Very simple. If you've got, on the other hand, a breath, so I think that's probably a breath, you left click and you highlight. Now because breathing is natural, if you actually cut those out of audio completely, the audio is not going to sound right because your voice is just going to sound like you've done the whole audio book in one breath which would be a mighty feat and very impressive but it will sound wrong. So really if you've got a big breath, which people do. I know I'm quite a noisy breather so often on voiceovers I'll be going <gasps> like that and you want to get rid of that definitely but you go to effect go to amplify and instead of deleting it you actually just want to make it much quieter so I would go for a, say a minus 15 click OK that will reduce it, it's actually reduced it almost completely but if you had a noisier breath it would still you would still see it slightly but it would be a lot more natural so that's how you get rid of breaths and then you've got your piece of audio you just go to file export as a WAV or as an mp3 and we're going to click call it test or whatever you're calling it chapter one whatever you choose to call your audio click save and it will export it and it, yes I want to replace because I've already done that obviously you'd name it something different to something that was already in there and it will export it as a project as an mp3 and I have explained how to do that on previous videos so if you're completely new to Audacity and you don't even know how to set Audacity up then go back to the early videos because that will give you all the information you need and we're all saved, you've got your audio, and that's chapter one for you. I hope that helps, Glenn. Let me know if you've got any further questions.